Right, quick update on the Porsche, uh, as it seems um, to have developed an issue. Uh, so I'm bringing forward the engine work that I had planned for the end of the year. But first, before I get into that, what the issue is, I should explain uh, the reason why I have this car, just to give a bit of, bit of context. So I was looking for a really good um, 996.1 Carrera 2 manual coupe for a while. So straight away that gave me uh, two options really. Uh, one, buy a you know, fully sorted car, uh, ready to go, or buy one that needed work um, and just you know, gradually get it sorted and get it to where, where I want it to be. And what I found was uh, well sorted, unmodified 996.1 C2 manual was a, a very rare. I couldn't really find the right car that was like really properly kind of well sorted and and all the rest of it, any any budget to be honest. There are a lot of rubbish ones out there though. But anyway, so I found, eventually I found this car just 10 minutes from me and I didn't go and look at it for a while. There's a few other cars I was looking at that I was, I was a lot more interested in that I'd had a lot more sort of Porsche specific information on. So, you know, IMS bearings, have they been done and um, all that stuff that you want to see. The problem with a really well sorted C2 manual, they sell really quickly and I was always just finding cars a little bit too late uh, and I was quite, quite often missing out. Um, the Dot 2s, there seems to be a lot more of them around. Um, I did test drive some of those and I wasn't, for some reason, wasn't overly impressed with them. Um, I can't quite put my finger on why, but I would much prefer the, the Dot 1 cars. But anyway, this particular dot one, like I say, it was just a, um, a normal kind of used car forecourt. So it was missing a lot of information. It looked to be completely original, uh, including the IMS. But I thought it's, yeah, it's 10 minutes from me. I can't not go and have a look at it. So that's exactly what I did. You can see for yourself kind of how, how it presents. It presents very well. I was really impressed with it. You know, it's a two owner car. Last guy had it twenty years, and it was yeah, it's completely original. Small details, but you know, even had the two original removable factory cup holders, which is you know, they're quite that's quite rare to see. And three keys, you know, full book pack, seventeen uh, services in the book, and all that sort of stuff. So it was kind of giving off all the right vibes, like someone had really looked after it on the test drive. It really impressed, apart from. Uh, and you know, this is when I realised why the car was still for sale and it wasn't selling. Uh, the engine did have a slight knock uh, when fully up to temp at idle. So when the um, when the oil pressure was at its lowest, uh, there was a knock there that would go away with any revs being applied. Now I was initially put off by that. <laughs> it sort of uh, uh, took me by surprise a little bit, but. It was, at the end of the day, it was a single issue, albeit a very, very big one, on an otherwise lovely car. Um, now, I wasn't really expecting to be so impressed uh, with that car. Um, so it did catch me off guard a little bit. And what, what I actually ended up doing was using that engine knock as a little bit of leverage uh, on the price. And I, just, I bought the car anyway. Now, the reason why I wasn't too worried is because although I'm you know, new to Porsches, I had been reading up on the Hartec 3.7 conversion engines, and that 3.7 conversion had sort of found its way onto like my, you know, into like my dream 996, if you like. So, it, you know, in the context of long-term 996 ownership, like major engine work was always something that I envisaged uh, having to be done anyway. Um, because they are just, you know, the M96 engine, they're just famous for being, uh, well, they're not famous for their reliability, put it that way. So I wasn't overly bothered by the, the prospect of an engine rebuild. That being said, I was hoping the car would get me through this year at least. Um, I bought the car in January. Um, I was hoping it would kind of see me through the year, uh, just to give me some time to save up some pennies for the, uh, for the engine work. But I mean, fast forward to March, uh, and I was already so impressed with the car 
uh, by that point that you know I knew I was going to keep the car for a very long time because um, it just did everything I wanted it to do really well. I put it into uh, daily use, so it was doing the school run, the the, you know, the food shop, whatever. It was just great to go for a blast in. Um, it just does everything really well. It's a really well rounded car, and yeah, I was just, I was just really impressed with it. So I I called I called Hartec in March just to ask about the the rebuild service and the three point seven conversion they do, just to see what Hartec were like really. Uh, and get an idea of, of what I was getting myself into. And I was really impressed, I have to say, with the with the guys at Hartec. And in the end, I was advised to call them back at the end of the summer to book the car in uh, for the work I wanted. But in the meantime, use the car and have a you know, good long think about whether I wanted a straight 3.4 rebuild or paid a little bit extra for the 3.7. So that was the plan. And like I say, I've been using the car as a daily driver. That's something I always do anyway, whenever I buy a new car, is to put it into daily service as quickly as possible. Uh, that just kind of teases out, especially if you've got a car that's just been a bit of a garage queen in the past. It just teases out anything that's about to fail all at once. So, you know, so soon after I pressed the car into service, the math sensor failed. The radiator sprung a leak. Well, I replaced the fan resistor. I don't know when that that could have failed a long time ago, though, to be honest. But anyway, but apart from those teething problems, the car was great, to be honest, on daily duties. Then one day, we're in early June now, I took it out for a drive, filled it up with fuel. Uh, and I noticed when I was pulling away from the petrol station, it was a hot day and the window's down. So I could hear, you know, engine noises reverberating off other cars and the pumps and stuff. Um, and I just noticed there was a horrible uh, metallic rattling noise coming from the engine. Uh, confusingly, the engine still felt fine. Um, there was no smoke. Uh, it wasn't dropping any oil. Um, so, you know, this was at the petrol station. It was about a mile away from my house. So I just drove straight home. Um, and took this recording. Now, I don't know what that is, so I, I haven't driven the car since. So the, yeah, the following working day, I got on the phone to Hartec again, and, and I've booked it in for the work. Now, June now, and they're picking it up in August. That's the current lead time so around two months lead time there just over two months because it's mid-august they're picking it up and i think from what they've said before i'll be lucky to get the car back uh, in october so that's what's happening now i plan to try and record what happens over the coming months uh, including the overall experience with hartec uh, the results of the post-mortem uh, on my current engine uh, the running in process of the new 3.7 and of course what it's like with 20% um, torque gain over the 3.4. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, I'll just quickly show you like where we've got to so far. So uh, like I say, it's booked in. Uh, here's a snippet of the job sheet uh, to show what I've, what I've gone for. Um, first line there, I've just, you know, I've opted to have their transport partner uh, trailer the car up, up to them as a, as a non-runner. Um, my car does run, but I've <laughs> I've said I'm I'm too scared to start it now, so I, I don't want them to start it um, either, just in case I end up with bent valves and things like that. So they're going to treat it as a non-runner. Next item there, the engine work. Uh, it says cylinder bore scope with the view to rebuild the engine. So I think that's just a bit of due diligence there on their part just to check the, no the noises that I've experienced aren't anything really silly. But the car has been to another specialist who, who already confirmed the engine would need a major strip strip down soon because the noise was, was bottom end knock. So that's kind of been confirmed already. But yeah, I'm getting the full Hartec treatment here. Uh, so we're talking closed deck alloy cylinders, reinforced at both ends and Nicosil plated just like the Metzger engines are. Uh, and F1 style pistons, uh, larger INS shaft and bearing, as well as the stuff you'd expect like cylinder head overhauls, timing chains, uh, crank bearings. Next one there, the 3.4 to 3.7 conversion. So 
10% more power, 20% more torque from that, apparently. Um, and obviously a hell of a lot cheaper to do if the engine is already out of the car in bits. That's the big stuff. And then there's the kind of just, you know, while you're in there sort of jobs. So coolant tank, mine is the original one, so it's, I presume it's due to fail soon. Be a lot cheaper to do that while the engine's out. Clutch kit, just because I can't see anything in the maintenance history that talks about a clutch. New oil cooler. So the specialist has already been to did mention I have a coolant leak at the cooler, the oil cooler. That's another one of those things that's like right, right in the heart of the engine. So much cheaper to just replace while the engine's out. Alternator, again, I can't see anything in the service history that suggests that the alternator is new or has been rebuilt. So while it's off and the car's having major work, it's not too much of a hassle to have that rebuilt. And then where it says attention to hoses, all that means is um, I'll, I'll basically take their advice about any engine coolant hoses. They recommend a change when they get the car, but that's it really. So middle of August, the car will be collected and we'll see how it goes. I'll do another video uh, when there are further updates, but for now, uh, thanks for watching.